Good evening, everybody, and welcome to HOPS Virtual Workshop number two. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you very much also to everybody who uh, tuned in last week and gave us some absolutely fantastic uh, feedback, um, which is why we scheduled workshop number two and, in fact, workshop number three, which is already scheduled for next week, Tuesday, the 12th of May uh, at 7 p.m. Um, as uh, many of you will know, uh, in the winter, uh, in the winter time, we often hold workshops at uh, railway locations uh, and invite you to come and join us. Um, but as a result of the current lockdown situation, we thought it was a good idea to hold some uh, virtual online workshops, um, which hopefully you find useful. Uh, as well as going out live, this video will be uh, saved to Facebook afterwards, and it will also be on uh, Hopsy's um, uh, YouTube channel. If you're watching this in the future, when it's uh, other than when it's gone out live, please do be aware that the uh, visual images of HOPS and the, the presentation does change from time to time, uh, but hopefully the principles of what's in this video and are correct today uh, will still be correct uh, when, when you're watching it back. Uh, if we haven't met before, uh, my name's Danny, um, and I'm one of the, the, the creators of HOPS. Uh, the chances are we've probably spoken by phone or by email sometimes if you're already a user of HOPS. Uh, or if you're watching because you might want to use hops in the future, then we will definitely uh, be speaking then. Uh, as we go along, do feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'm pleased to say I've got Ernest here uh, again, uh, not here in the same room as me, but monitoring the comments uh, and prompting me with what to say uh, on the auto queue. So please do uh, comment in the in the comments and, and hopefully we might be able to address any questions as we go along. Um, already quite a lot of people watching, so we'll just say hello to some of the people that are watching. Hello to uh, David Whale from the Chinna Railway, Paul Evans from the Mid-Norfolk Railway, Adam Williams from the Dean Forest Railway, Chris Taggart from the Isle of Wight. Hello to all of you. Thank you for tuning in. Andy Green from the Cambrian uh, Heritage Railway, a very new HOPS admin. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, Mel from the Alm Valley. Hello. How are you? And Richard Kay from the North Yorkshire Moors and Stuart from MSA. So hello to everybody who's tuned in already. Uh, if, uh, if you didn't comment, then you didn't get a hello, then comment now and, uh, and you'll get one. Uh, what you can see on the screen is a fake version of HOPS for a fake railway called Heritage Railway. Uh, it's got lots of um, uh, completely made up data in that I use for taking screenshots and doing training and things like that. So don't be alarmed that what you're seeing on the screen might be uh, real data. It's all uh, completely fake uh, made up data. So today we're going to talk about uh, calendars and timetables. Uh, these are two very useful uh, features in HOPS and, th and they work together very closely. They're, they're one of the key things that enable um, organizations to use HOPS as a single source of truth, as a one go-to place where the official answer to what's happening or what the, the official status is, um, is saved. By having one official operations calendar in HOPS and making sure that everybody's aware that that is the one and only true official calendar, um, saves a lot of confusion and dubiety over what trains are running or, or whether they are or they're not or whether an additional move has been accepted or it hasn't. Um, and certainly some railways that, uh, that I've been to uh, to help implement HOPS uh, and I hear horror stories like uh, a roster clerk might say, I have to look on the railway's Twitter page to find out whether we're running a fish and chip train on Tuesday to know whether to roster a steam driver and fireman for it. And you think, oh my goodness me, what a... What a, a, a way to, to, to have misunderstandings and, and to have problems occur is to not have one official source of the truth um, of just a calendar of what, what the business is doing. Um, I'll very briefly show you the calendars, but I'm going to talk about calendars second uh, after I've talked about timetables. So in the uh, left hand menu here, and don't forget that everybody sees HOPS slightly differently. So if the page that I've got in front of me hasn't got exactly the same links on as, as what you're used to, that's going to be based on permissions. You only get permission to see the links that, uh, that you've got permission to see. Sorry, you only get to see the links that you've got permission to see. Uh, there's several different formats of calendar. I'm going to look at this one here, the 2020 Ops calendar. And this is going to be a, uh, an overall view of what the organization is running. And most organizations that use HOPS have some sort of color coordination uh, system for their different types of operating days, red, yellow, green, blue, that sort of thing. Uh, we will come on in a minute to talk about um, the possibility of things like blue plus evening dining train or red plus footplate experience. You know, those sorts of little uh, modifications to the normal standard timetable. We'll talk about those in a second. But as you can see already, it's a nicely formatted 
uh, grid of the year. You can make the year start on whatever month you like. I know a lot of organizations like to start their year in February so that the sort of new year running counts as part of the previous year. But this one's just set up to run from January to December. There's tabs along the top and the tabs uh, will go as far back in time as as far back as you've been using hops and will always go one year beyond the current year so that you can put in your next year's calendar um, in readiness. There are actually three different ways of viewing the, the annual operations calendar. We're in columnar mode at the moment, but we can go to calendar mode and it just presents it as a, as a slightly more laid out uh, monthly calendar or in tabular mode where it will it'll just show us a long list like this with a line per day but I prefer columnar uh, so that's what I always keep mine on and each individual user can select for themselves which view they want to uh, want to see oh my goodness lots of hellos have just come through on the auto queue so hello to James from the Critch Tramway Museum Lawrence from the Vale of Barclay hi Lawrence uh, Ben from the EVR sorry I don't know which EVR that is but it'll be one of the EVRs uh, Roger Crow from uh, Chinna, Ben Angus from Keith and Dufftown. Hi, Ben. Uh, another Ben from Lapa Valley. Hi, Ben. Steve Sagrot from the West Somerset. David Floyd from the Rushton uh, Railway. Uh, Tony Peters, uh, who I think is from Deacott Railway Centre. And Tom Bailey from Etchell's Wood. Alistair Baker from Bressingham. David Snell from the Vale of Barclay. Hello to everybody who's watching and thank you very much for tuning in. Do feel free to ask questions in the comments as we go along uh, and we'll do our best to answer them. So having just shown you what a, uh, an almost finished product calendar um, looks like, I'm going to come away from the calendar slightly. We will come back to it and talk about it in more detail, but I'm going to come away from the calendar slightly uh, now, that, now that I've shown you what it sort of looks like. And I'm going to talk about timetables. And firstly, I'm going to talk about what are called base timetables in HOPS. And they live here in this menu on the left hand side, the operations menu, base timetables, separate from daily timetables, the option below it, which we'll come on to in a second. Base timetables is uh, a list of these different colors of day um, uh, that the organization operates. So it's a very simple example on the screen, uh, blue, red, green and yellow for special events. But you can color them however you want for whatever your existing uh, color coordination scheme is. Uh, so just to, uh, to talk you through, we'll create a new one. We'll create uh, what color have we not got? We'll create an orange timetable. So up in the in the top in the gray tabs, add new timetable. I don't know if you can see my mouse moving around on the screen. Apologies if you can't. I'll try and uh, verbally describe things as well as pointing to them with the mouse. Perhaps someone could mention in the comments whether you can see my mouse or not. So although I've used the word timetable and if you haven't seen timetables in hops before that might conjure up uh, an image of um, uh, the 10 o'clock train from such and such a station and it calls at this station at five past ten. You don't have to go into that much level of detail in timetables in hops. When I use the word timetable, I'm just referring to that headline of it's the blue timetable today or it's the red timetable plus footplate experience. So we'll give this timetable a name and I'm just going to call it the orange timetable. You could call it timetable one or timetable B or the spring timetable or whatever you wanted to call it. And I'll pick a color and I'd always recommend picking the more sort of pastel -y colors uh, than the really rich colors uh, just because it makes the screen a bit um, uh, a bit, a bit easier to look at and uh, and perhaps isn't so heavy on the printer ink. So I'm not going to choose orange or orange red here. I'm going to choose, uh, what shall I go? I'll go for a color that HTML calls sandy brown, but it looks orange to me. Uh, you can put a description in if you want to, which just helps uh, as a, uh, to identify one timetable from another. If, uh, if somebody was looking at the list of timetables who didn't immediately know that orange meant the two train timetable. So I'll just type in two train timetable in here. Uh, to enable easy um, uh, distinction between the orange timetable from this year and the orange timetable from last year, you can sort each timetable into a year. So I'll pick that it's the 2020 timetable. You don't have to do that at all. You can just leave it out and just say it's the orange timetable that I'm going to use forever. That's absolutely fine. It's, it's just there if you want to make that distinction. And an abbreviation letter is what will appear when there isn't quite enough space in hops here to, to write the whole name of the timetable such on that operations calendar that we uh, that we saw earlier so an abbreviation letter for the orange timetable might just be O again hopefully uh, you will be able, or you will be able to put in exactly what it is that you're currently using or have previously used that that everyone on in your organization already knows orange means to the two train timetable or, or blue means it's the it's the diesel timetable or whatever it is 
You can, if you want to, select some dates between which the timetable is valid. And that is useful if you're going to uh, work on the basis that this is only the orange timetable for 2020 and the orange timetable for 2021 is going to be different. If we do specify dates that the timetable can be used between, it will only allow us to use it on those dates. We can change our mind, of course. We can come back and edit the dates later if we suddenly decide we want to use the orange timetable after the 31st of January 2021. Uh, it's not a problem, it's just um, to make it a bit easier when selecting timetables that there's not you know, 10 different orange timetables in the list after you've been using hops uh, for 10 years. Oh, I've just been told that uh, the drop down menus don't show up but, uh, uh, on, the, on the screencast, but this color uh, drop down list uh, has a massive list of colors in it and, and, and the background is the color that it is if you're using a Windows machine. Unfortunately, a Mac won't do it, but You'll have to work off the uh, off the title of the color. Uh, so anyway, I've picked uh, picked a color that I like. I can pick a sort order if I want to. If I want these timetables to appear in a nice uh, specific um, order in the list um, of timetables, but I'm not too worried for the sake of this demo, so I'm going to leave it blank. The WPCSS class uh, WP stands for WordPress, uh, and it's for um, I'll, I'll show you in a little while that you can. Um, obtain um, HTML out of hops to just simply copy and paste into your website if you have a public facing website and you want to show the timetable on it. I know the, uh, the colors of the working timetable and the, the distinction between the days on the working timetable aren't always the same as they are to the public, but uh, you can of course tweak it if you want to uh, and it, it's a good place to start, but I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. I'm just going to leave it blank for now. Uh, you can also uh, upload a file if you want to, or, or more than one file, in fact, to the uh, to the timetable. Um, and again, remember I said in hops, uh, at the moment at least, we're not really concerned with that the train departs at 10 past five and the, and the next one's at quarter past five. We're just saying the timetable is the orange timetable. That's all we need to know. But if we wanted to upload a PDF of the timetable or the notes to the timetable or the crew diagrams or anything that we wanted to, we could upload it here. So again, I don't know if you can uh, you can see me uploading a file, but I've just picked a file off my machine in that choose file box. Uh, and I'll just call it the WTT. You don't have to fill out all these fields, only the fields that you actually want to. You can leave them blank if they're not required. And I'll say it's version number one. And I'll go down to the bottom and I'll press continue and it'll save and it'll upload that file. And here's the overview of the orange timetable that I just created. And everywhere where we see it, it'll have this nice orange background to visually uh, help distinguish between the different color timetables. Uh, here's a download link to that working timetable that I uploaded. Again, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I don't think you can see it downloading, but, uh, but an image of a timetable is now downloaded. I think you can only see my hops tab, not, uh, not what I'm downloading, but that's where the downloads will appear um, under here. If I go back to the list of timetables, that's where I started. Uh, let me just move up a bit. Uh, and this is the exact same page that I got to when I selected operations from the left-hand menu and then went to base timetables. And previously it didn't have the orange in there's the orange that I just created. Uh, there's the description, the two train timetable. There's the downloads, the files that I uploaded and here's links to delete it and edit it. And because I put that it was a 2020 timetable, it's appeared here under the 2020 heading. There's one that I created on a different occasion that I put in the 2021 uh, uh, section. Now, uh, before we go back to the calendar and put some of these timetables on the calendars, I did mention earlier that um, sometimes, or, or in fact in every single case, uh, it's not as simple as just it's red, yellow, green or blue. Almost every organization that uses hops has these extra little things on the timetable like red plus steam experience, blue plus uh, evening dining train. And you could just create more and more timetables for every permutation that, um, uh, that you wanted. Uh, but uh, if you had four timetables and four possible modifiers, you'd have to then create 16 timetables uh, and, and it would pretty soon get out of control. So if we scroll down a little bit in the list of timetables, here's a thing called timetable modifiers. And there's two examples in there already, evening, dining and lunch train. I'll put another one in now just to show you. So I clicked on add new modifier. Me. I'll call it the footplate experience modifier again I get to pick an abbreviation letter that can that can show on the calendar same as I picked O for orange 
Um, and I always, uh, I, I like here, I always like either the plus sign and maybe FE for foot plate experience or the, the forward slash uh, sign so that when it appears on the calendar, it'll be O plus FE or O slash FE. I think if you don't put any little character in and it's just O F E, the letters all start to, to, to mix together and it becomes a little bit more difficult to identify which letters are the timetable and which letters are the, are the modifier. So I'm going to use a slash in this instance. Uh, the same as with the normal timetable, I can I can select a description, I can select dates that it's valid to and from, and I can put a class in uh, if I want to export it into WordPress uh, or any other website for that matter, uh, and I can add files to it uh, in the same way as I did with a normal timetable. So I'll press continue, and uh, there it is. There's the uh, footplate experience uh, timetable modifier that I added. And if I put any downloads or a description in, they would, of course, appear in the uh, in the columns there. And there's an edit link where I can go back and change it if I want to. So hopefully it is uh, if you do have uh, four timetables and four modifiers, it's only a case of putting in the four timetables and the four modifiers, not having to put in 16 individual timetables of all different permutation of red plus evening dining, red plus footplate experience, red plus Sunday lunch, blue plus evening dining, blue plus footplate experience, blue plus Sunday lunch etc 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 right having specified uh, these these headlines of timetables uh, of different modes of operation that the business has I'm now going to go back to the calendar and show you how to allocate them to different days so I'll go back to the calendars menu I'll just go back to 2020 operations calendar uh, I've got just had a question come up in the comments to say that somebody can't log in and they want to know how to log in. Uh, you have to contact your railway hops administrator to obtain access to hops. Um, uh, if you don't know who that is, uh, I'll, I'll tell you in the comments afterwards or, or I'll email you afterwards and tell you who it is. But I'm afraid if you can't log in, um, that, that's something that uh, your, your railway has to um, administer for you. Uh, so we're back here on the um, uh, on the operations calendar. You can see quite a lot of days are already populated, but I'll go to a blank one. I'll go to the 5th of May, uh, uh, 5th of March, sorry. And all I'll do is I'll just click on the 5th of March and it'll bring me up the calendar uh, day page uh, for the 5th of March, which as you can see at the moment looks pretty blank. Uh, there's not a lot uh, on it. Now, this is the sort of the first principles way of allocating a timetable to a day. And then I'll show you the sort of the, the, the quick way. So I'll click on edit up the top here to edit the 5th of March. And here's where I select what timetable is going to run. And of course, it will only show me the timetables that are valid within the dates uh, that, that include the 5th of March. So it won't include anything that I put in the 2019 uh, suite of timetables to expire on the 31st of December 2019, because I just don't want to see that timetable after the 31st of December 2019. Uh, so I've selected that it's going to be blue, the 2020 blue. And I can, if I want to, also select a modifier. There's my three modifiers. So I am going to make up that this is a blue plus footplate experience day. I can also, if I want to, put a title in like Steam, whoops, Steam Gala um, or, or whatever sort of local title uh, that you want to give the day. You can put that in there. I will come back uh, in, in a minute and talk about some of these other fields on this page. But for the moment, that's all I'm, I'm going to put uh, in, in, the, um, uh, in, in the 5th of March. So I'll press save. That's back to the 5th of March page. And you can see it's now populated with the blue train. There's the sorry, the blue timetable. There's a description of what the blue timetable is. It's a three train day. There's the modifier that I put in and there's it all contracted down to a blue slash FEB because the abbreviation for blue is B. You can use whatever you like and FE because the abbreviation for footplate experience is slash FE. Because I put it in that it was a steam gala then the word steam gala has appeared up the top there. And if I go back to the calendar, the 5th of March, oops, it's gone down a bit. The 5th of March has now got, it's colored in blue and it's got blue plus FE written on it. And I could go through the whole year uh, going edit, I'll make that one red. And even though I can change the, uh, the little after saving box down here to go edit tomorrow so that I can edit the next day, uh, it would still take me quite a long time to go through the whole year. So I'll go back to calendar and this is the much easier way of allocating timetables to days is in the top right hand corner here you can see show tick boxes. So I'll go show tick boxes and then I can just tick all the days that I want to make into a certain color and I've got all and none shortcut boxes up the top here, a shortcut link so if I wanted all the days in 
January, I could just tick all and it would do them all. And then down at the very bottom, here's the with selected box and a drop down box. And uh, I've been told that you can't see what when I uh, when I uh, expand the drop down box. So I'll just uh, select one or two things to show you. Uh, there's one option, assign working timetable. And there's an option in the list for every uh, available uh, working timetable. So I've just picked the blue one there. And there's the green one. There's the orange one. Uh, there's also assign modifiers, so evening dining, footplate experience, all the modifiers from the list. And then there's some uh, some ones to undo. So there's remove timetable from the day and clear all from the day. Because as you saw, there are some other fields that I could have filled in on the day, which we're going to come back to in a minute. So with all those ones that I've ticked, I'm going to make those into my orange timetable. I'll press go. And now they've all gone orange. And now I could select all the ones that I wanted to be the blue timetable and select make it blue. And then I could select all the ones that wanted to be green. It's a lot quicker way than doing each day individually. I'll go hide tick boxes again here in the top right hand corner. And even though I've just done that, that exercise with tick boxes, I could still change my mind. If I click on the 4th of January and go, oh, I didn't mean to do that one as orange. I meant to do that one as blue. I can just go back and change it to blue. It hasn't done anything that sort of locks me in. Um, it's just an easy way of uh, of making a change to many uh, days at the same time. I'll go show tick boxes again, and now I'm going to put on all my footplate experience uh, modifiers. So I'm going to imagine that the 1st of March has got a footplate experience and the 7th of March. It doesn't matter that they're different color timetables. I'm going to put the uh, footplate experience modifier on both of them. So again, I'll go down to the bottom. I'll pick from the with selected list. Uh, assign modifier footplate experience and just to remind me it's a slash fe that's on the end and I'll press go and hopefully there we are we can see that the 1st of March is now orange stroke fe and the 7th of March is now a uh, green stroke fe and if I finished I'll go hide tick boxes again and if I click on any of these days uh, I'll just get taken back to the uh, the page for the day which shows with the color background what timetable is operating uh, with the download uh, for it uh, as well. And if I select on a day where there is uh, a roster in hops uh, that's got people working on it, uh, such as I've already looked into this, the 7th of May tomorrow, uh, it's a red day tomorrow apparently, red timetable. If I scroll down a little bit, Here's a list of staff from all of the, the rosters in the whole organization. And depending on your size of organization, you might just have one or you might have loads. But all the people that are working on this particular day and all other use and a lot of other useful things uh, that are applicable to a certain date in time are shown on this page as well. If you've got the appropriate permissions, such as the group bookings, there are none on this day. But if there were, they would show in there. If I'd listed any additional staff requirements. Um, in a minute, we'll talk about calendar organization, which is other layers to the calendar and anything specific to this date in almost the whole of hops can be made to show on this page. And it makes it a great one place go to for information about what's happening on the present day. It's really good for the duty manager. It's really good um, for, uh, uh, for staff that are working on this particular day uh, to see everything that they've got permission to see in hops uh, that they need to that's, uh, that's going on on that day. Um, and as I said right at the start, it enables you to have a very comprehensive, uh, accessible uh, timetable and calendar system and only have one official version of the truth and not have Excel spreadsheets that get emailed around and become unversion controlled and different people make adjustments to them in pen. And after the 200th time of answering a query about what are we doing on Tuesday with the answers on hops, eventually people get the hang of it. And they just look on hops in the first place. Um, there were one or two other uh, fields available uh, on each calendar day uh, that I said I'd come back to. So I'll come back to those now. Uh, I'll use my favorite day, the 7th of March, which is tomorrow. Uh, so again, here's the, the 7th of March page with its red timetable. And I'll go edit. So we already know that we can put a title on the day, Steam Gala. We've got lots of Steam Galas, but we'll have another one. I can, if I want to, add a custom suffix just to the day. And this is appropriate if you have a um, uh, something going on that day that uh, maybe only happens once. And so it's not appropriate for it to become a modifier in its own right. Um, let's imagine that uh, it was the uh, 50th anniversary weekend. 
I could put a little custom suffix in to say slash 50 because it's only ever going to happen once. So I don't really want to make a modifier for it in its own right, but I do want it to appear on the calendar uh, that it's something a little bit different. So if I save this page we'll, and go back to the calendar, we'll now see that the 7th of May has got r slash five zero on it just because I put in that little custom suffix. And unlike the timetables and the modifiers which spill out into loads of other parts of hops and we can do calculations based on whether a footplate experience is running or not, the slash 50 is just totally a custom suffix that if you want something extra to appear on the calendar uh, then it can appear. Um, quite often I also see it used for um, if you have an, an annual um, uh, like an annual special train, like a group that always comes and, and hires a train on a, on a particular day, but it's only ever once a year. Um, and if that organization's initials were ABC, I quite often see, oh yes, everybody knows that the ABC group are coming on that day. So we'll just put in a slash ABC and everybody knows what the ABC means. Just like with everything else in hops, I'm not going to tell you what to put in the box. I'm not going to tell you how to run the organization. I'm just saying that the, uh, the box is there for you to put things in uh, if you want to. Uh, the next options on the on the date page are whether the timetable is a standard timetable or a special non-standard timetable. So we're starting to blur the lines a little bit now between, well, if it's a non-standard timetable, is it really red? Uh, again, that's up to you to decide. If you decide that it's so non-standard that it isn't even really red, then you can not assign it to red and either assign it to a special event or no timetable at all or whatever you prefer. But again, I, I see it crop up quite a lot that, well, it is the red timetable, Danny, but it's the non-standard red timetable where we always do things 10 minutes later or, or, or whatever it's going to be. If we select that it's a special non-standard timetable, then the other parts of hops that rely on knowing what timetable is in use today won't uh, respect that it's a red timetable on the 7th of May. They'll ask the user, the human, for some sort of input as to what to do next because they know that even though it's been put on the calendar as red, it's actually something a bit different and a bit special that's that's different to red. So we're, we'll ask for some input rather than just going ahead with, uh, with the calculation as, as if it was red. And I'm sorry if that sounds a bit abstract at the moment, but there are lots of other parts of hops such as uh, rosters for certain, uh, planned asset usage, um, things like that. Um, that depend on whether it's a red timetable or not, whether it's a footplate experience or not. So this is just a way of saying, well, yes, we are putting it on the calendar as red, but don't actually treat it as red. Uh, I think that's one of those things whereby until you come naturally across the fact that you need it, don't worry about it. But when you come up to the fact that you think, oh, what we could really do with is a way of saying this isn't really red, that's where you do it. If it never comes up, don't worry, just leave it on standard timetable. The operations instructions and the special staff requirements are an opportunity for um, whoever's in charge of operating uh, the company uh, to put in extra, uh, extra clues about what they're expecting to happen on that day. And the clues can be as, um, as comprehensive or not as comprehensive uh, as you like. Uh, and it's best to put in, uh, it's best to put in what the people who are going to read it are expecting. So if, for example, we're running an extra train in the evening, maybe it's this train for this ABC group, if the people in your organization that, that deliver the service are used to being asked, um, uh, there's an extra train running at seven o'clock, an extra train at 7 p.m. Uh, and they will know what to do with that information and to provide an extra driver or an extra level crossing keeper or whatever it is, then that's fine and, and just put in what people are expecting to hear. But in a different organization, it might be the case that you go to the special staffing requirements and say, please provide, whoops, a whoops, driver, guard, level crossing keeper from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Whatever level of information that you're used to giving and however uh, detailed you want to make it, uh, this, is, this is where to put it. Uh, the send email box allows you to have a, um, uh, a little list of people um, who uh, you feel want to be updated when the calendar changes. So particularly heads of departments, roster clerks, commercial people, those sorts of things. Not designed to go out to everybody, just designed to go out to the people that need to know that the timetable uh, or the calendar has been changed for that day. So once again, I'll click on save and we'll find that because I wrote those special staffing requirements in, where are they? Here they are, special staffing requirements. In other places in the system that relate to staffing requirements, those words will appear. And uh, again, it comes down to uh, this, um, 
this system of governance, this system of control, where whoever is responsible for this extra train running or whoever's responsible for coordinating the timetable uh, can put in words in this box, and that is the official um, that is the official word of the company. And the driver's roster clerk will hopefully provide a driver, and the guard will realise that he's on from seven to nine p.m. Um, and any extra things in addition to the red timetable uh, appear in this box um, as one official source of the truth. Uh, now, I will go back up to the top. Uh, oh, just before we go any further, I'll show you this WordPress thing because it is quite useful. It is it is a little bit detailed, but it is uh, very useful um, uh, to know about, uh, especially if you want to have a copy of the uh, of the timetable on your on your public website. Uh, at the bottom of the of the calendar here, there's HTML for calendar websites link, and I'm going to. Uh, show you an example uh, by whoops, uh, those of you who know me well will know that uh, I also run this website, Swin and Panel website. Uh, it just uh, runs in WordPress. Uh, if you haven't visited Swin and Panel at Didcot Railway Centre, please do so. Uh, open almost every weekend. Uh, but the reason why I'm showing you the Swindon website is because it's a website totally not connected to hops and I've just made a blank page here called uh, test for hops demo. What I'm going to do is I'll go back to the hops website uh, and having clicked on that link HTML for websites there's there's three boxes here uh, and if, if you're familiar with HTML then you'll be able to see what's going on uh, and that uh, that we're we're formatting the timetable into this uh, into this html format but if you've never used html before then then please don't worry because uh, all you have to be able to do is copy and paste so uh, i'll copy the css and uh, i'm going to struggle here because i can only show you one tab just bear with me a second i'll go to the swing and panel website i'm going to edit this blank page i'll put the style in and then i'll copy the Calendar. This box is called Calendar. Paste. And finally, you have to do a bit of editing in this box yourself. This is where you have to define the words that you used in that WPCSS class. And I know I haven't defined them all, but I know that I did define one, and I called it Two Trains. Did I call it Two Train? I think I called it Two Train. So all I've done is copy and paste, uh, and I'll update the page. And I know not all of the days are going to show. View page. I know not all of the days are going to show because I only put in the red ones. But that has completely come out of hops and copied the uh, the colours that are in hops, and uh, and put them onto the appropriate uh, calendar day, making it very easy to copy and paste that into your own uh, public website. Now, as I say, I do realise that. Um, uh, it may be the case that the internal colors of the website are different to the external ones. Uh, I'm afraid that's going to require a bit of uh, a bit for you to know how to interpret this HTML, but you can certainly see uh, if you're familiar with HTML that all the HTML is here and just changing the, the class to something else that you want it to be on the certain day uh, will enable you to just change the colors in your public website. So I'm not going to go on and on about that because I know it's a, a pretty advanced thing, but I just thought I'd mention the fact that it was there because I know a lot of railways that use hops um also want to have uh, a version at least of the uh, of the operating uh, calendar on their on their public website so there's the link at the bottom html calendar for websites uh so we've talked about uh base timetables uh we've talked about calendars we've talked about some ways of deviating from a standard red uh, uh or a standard blue or a standard green by putting modifiers on or deviating even further by putting a custom suffix on or deviating even further by just telling hops that um that this is a non-standard uh red day we're going to come back to uh some of the reasons why uh we might want to tell uh hops that it's not a standard red day after we've looked in a bit more detail uh at uh some calendars uh, and after I've answered this question, uh, which says Tom Bailey has asked um, to see how you have the P-Way heading for ops instructions. I'm not quite sure I 
follow. Let's see if I can have a look. Uh, Tom, do you want to try and comment a bit more about um, what you're referring to, ops instructions? Are we talking about this down here in the organization? Maybe we are. Well, that's what I'm going to come on to talk about now anyway. So uh, while Ernest and Tom sort out the detail of that question, uh, yes, the PWA works activities. Okay, I think we're talking about this down here, uh, which is what I'm going to come on to talk about now anyway. Uh, so we've talked about the operating calendar, which timetables we're going to operate on different days. But we all know that there is a lot more that goes on in terms of calendar planning than um, than just what timetable is going to operate. And some things we can put in those operations instructions boxes, um, additional staff requirement boxes. But some things are just going to be so completely different uh, from the operating calendar that we might want to add other layers to this calendar uh, to talk about other things that go on. And those other layers whoops, appear here in calendars and they're called calendar organization. So I'll click on calendar organization. And you can have as many calendar organization subjects as you like. So these are all previous ones that I've put in uh, on previous demos and they're all valid ones. Uh, Locos in particular is quite a good one. If you're not a support licensed customer, having a calendar organization subject for Locos is very useful because it means you can have a column on the calendar, sorry, on the roster for that calendar organization subject to show what Locos are running on that day. If you are a support licensed customer, then I don't recommend you use that method. I recommend you use the asset management uh, method and have planned asset usage, each locomotive being an asset, uh, and have it appear on the roster that way. But whichever you do and whichever you don't, it is um, uh, uh, it is a worthwhile thing to do. I've seen it used for booking meeting rooms as well. That was an experiment in doing that for one particular railway. Uh, we're going to add a new calendar organization subject, a new layer to this calendar for the sake of the demo, and we're going to call it um, S&T work. And this is going to be a calendar where the S&T manager or the S&T team is going to put in the work they're planning to do on each particular day, just so that the company knows where they're planning to be and what they're planning to do. As with everything in Ops, you don't have to use absolutely every function. You can pick and choose the bits out of it uh, that you like. Um, I'll come back to the other uh, fields on this page uh, when we've looked at it a bit. But I'll create this new calendar subject called S&T Work. Here it is. It's now appeared in the list. So I'll click on it. There'll be nothing in the calendar at the moment. So I'll add a new entry and we'll say that uh, tomorrow uh, the headline uh, again, it's up to you what you decide the headline is going to be in the detail, but let's put um, uh, uh, signal maintenance. And then in the detail, I'll put working on all the signals at the north end of the station. And I could just leave it at that. Uh, in fact, I'll show you that. I'll go save. And there it is, appeared in the calendar. There's the information that it dragged from the timetable, and because we filled uh, from the calendar, sorry, and because we filled in loads of information, it's quite a long, uh, quite a long list. But you know, whatever information is in the calendar about that particular day uh, will appear here. Again, that's the advantage of having one official source of the calendar that it can appear on all these other um, uh, uh, in these other places in the system. I'll I'll just go back and edit it. So I'll click on the edit link. Uh, because as well as it just being uh, pinned down to a date, you could also untick the all day box and put in a start time and a finish time. Save that and you'll see it appears on the uh, calendar with a time this time. Or I could make it span across several days. So if it's not one day only, then I get the option to have a finish date. So we'll say that it finishes on the 12th. And you can select whether or not this particular activity is from 10 o'clock to 1600 on each individual day. So from HHMM to HHMM every day from the start date to the end date. Or whether it starts at 10 o'clock on the 7th and finishes at 1600 on the 12th and runs continuously. And depending on what this calendar layer is for, uh, will we'll obviously likely mean that you want different, uh, different options there. But since this is a gang out working and they're only going to be there from 10 o'clock to 1600 each day, we'll leave it on the um, from HHMM to HHMM every day from the start date to the end date. But we'll say that they're not going to go out on uh, Friday. So we'll untick the Friday box. I'm, I'm sure there are weird permutations of circumstance where all of these different options might somehow be necessary. So I've saved it now. And now the same calendar entry appears on five different days. Uh, and you'll see it's 10 o'clock to 1600 on every single day. And just to make sure um, no one can misinterpret um, uh, what, what the extent of this activity is, it does say on the bottom of each entry in the calendar 
um, that it's 10 o'clock to 1600 each day from Thursday the 7th until Tuesday the 12th, Friday accepted. So hopefully it doesn't show up on the Friday. No, it doesn't. It goes straight from the 7th to the 9th. Now, like a lot of things in hops, the permissions can be broken down um, by different calendar layers. So the S&T manager would only have permission to edit the S&T uh, calendar. The carriage and wagon manager or the P-Way manager would only have permission to edit their own calendar. And it is completely up to you what level of information you expect to see in the calendar. Additional shunting moves, where the coaches are supposed to end up at the end of the day, all those sorts of things are things that I see in these additional calendar layers. Um, which are all just useful additional information in the operation of the business. Now I'm going to click on Thursday the 7th of May over here in the, in the uh, column on the left to go back to the, um, oh it's opened in a new tab, sorry, I'll just go back a step, um, to go back to the calendar day for Thursday the 7th of May. And down at the bottom now, here are those calendar entries that are applicable to Thursday the 7th of May. So there's the signal maintenance one that I just added in. There's another calendar layer here called P-Way Activities, um, uh, which has also got an entry in it there. If I go back a step, go back to calendar organization again. When I first created that S&T um, uh, calendar subject um, and I titled it S&T work, I can select here when it shows on the daily operation sheet, that daily page that we were just looking at. I can select that it never shows, uh, and, and then obviously it'll never show. I can select that it always shows, in which case it'll always show, or that it only shows when there's actually something to say, when there's actually something on that date, some calendar entry on that date to show. Um, so again, totally up to you uh, uh, how much you want each of your calendar organization subjects to show. And separately from that, whether or not it should show on the group bookings calendar. And that is very useful for um, calendar organization subjects that relate to the capacity of the business to accept um, group bookings. And I'm sure we'll do another video another day on group bookings. Um, and you'll see that it's possible to get calendar organization subjects to appear uh, in the group bookings calendar, just like it is in these uh, in these operations calendars. So I'll come out of here and I've got to cancel. The page that we've been looking at, the page that shows all of the S&T uh, work, is, is it has tabs at the top for every year that it's been in use plus one more year. Uh, you can hide and show past entries. There are no past entries in this, so hiding and showing them is not going to make any difference. But normally entries for previous days disappear off the top of the calendar unless you explicitly show them. If I go back to the list of subjects, I can also view all and I can view a calendar that's got all of my calendar organization subjects in. It also has the operating timetable color on it as well. So you'll notice tomorrow, the 7th of May, which is a steam gala in the P-Way activities calendar, there's fish plate oiling. And I know you can't see it on the screencast, unfortunately, but when you mouse over fish plate oiling, a little tool tip comes up to give you the description that was entered. And in the S&T work calendar, signal maintenance, again, if I mouse over the tool tip that I can see that you can't, says working on all the signals at the north end of the station, 10 o'clock to 1600. So quite a useful way of uh, having the ability to see <clears throat> um, different, uh, different data in different ways, as you'd expect, and as much or as little data as is appropriate for the task that you're trying to do. Uh, Paul Evans has asked, will there be a live calendar for HTML in the future because the current method is only the current version? Uh, there might be. Uh, you never know. Watch this space. Hops is always developing. I haven't, uh, haven't got one at the moment, though, I'm afraid. Um, I'll have to be a little bit careful because uh, we'll have to cope with that uh, distinction between what the railway publishes internally in, in terms of its calendar and what, what should go out externally, because I'm sure that, um, you know, there'll be some uh, timetable types that to the public are the same, but internally um, are different. Uh, right. Uh, last thing, then I'm going to go back to, um, uh, to timetables again and uh, I shall uh, go operations and then base timetables. And um, <clears throat> in this list of uh, timetables, uh, we put in uh, a title, remember I said, and an abbreviation letter and a description and some files and all those kinds of things. I'll just click on orange and we'll remind ourselves there's all the things that we, that we put in to define what this orange operating day actually means. But there's some other tabs that you'll notice up the top here. These other tabs. So I'll just quickly talk about some of these other tabs. The general tab is the tab we've always been on. 
The service days tab shows a list of all the days when this timetable is going to be in use in the future. And unfortunately, I picked a bad example because this one isn't in use on any days in the future. So I'll pick a different one. I'll go back to red service days. And there's all the days, uh, again, with the appropriate calendar information on the left hand side, uh, that the red timetable is going to be in use and which departments have already rostered staff to work on it. So this is designed uh, to be looked at if it's going to be necessary to either make a change to the red timetable or to make a change to a day that's got a red timetable because for some unforeseen operating reason it's now necessary to make it a blue timetable and you can see how far the departments have got through their through their planning of, of the staff for that day um, to deliver the service that was the red service, which may now be different because it's going to be a blue service. The last three tabs all relate to templates of, um, uh, of usage of other parts of the system that relate to timetables. So uh, for the red timetable, we can specify a base roster, for example. Uh, for each department, what staff we normally require on a red day. We're not locked into that to say that this is what we will always have on a red day. This is just our template. And again, I'm going to promise lots of videos that I might never make, but one day I'm sure we'll do a video on, on rosters and you'll see that it becomes very, very easy to tell the system, look, just on every red day, stamp that template on the roster and then I'll tweak the roster if there are any tweaks required. But it's a lot easier than having to laboriously go through and specify that we need a signalman in Apple Tree East and a signalman in Apple Tree West and a signalman at Duck Pond Junction and a duty manager and all these things on every single red day by having them here uh, in a template. Uh, and I use this term base to mean template. So we can also specify some base trains and Although I said that Hops doesn't really care about the fact that it's a 10 o'clock service from somewhere and it calls at another station at 10.45. And, and that's exactly true, that, that in the vast majority of cases in Hops, all Hops is interested in is that it's the red timetable on that particular day and whether it's got a modifier or not. But there are some places in the system, group bookings is one of them for sure, where it is necessary to, or it is optional, it is, it is advantageous um, to break it down into individual trains on individual days. And in the same way as you can make a template of the staff that are required, stamp it on a roster and then tweak it there, you can make a template of the trains that are required, stamp it onto a day uh, and then edit it from there. And I'll show you that one in just a second. And then the last template that we can make on here is base asset usage, which links into the asset management system in HOPS. And this is really useful for planning, uh, like which locomotive is going to be on which train um, uh, and, that, and that sort of thing. So this would be where we'd put in what assets, so maybe what locos. I know I've put locos in my permanent way group here, but I was obviously just uh, just practicing uh, what locos, what loco diagrams we normally require without actually allocating them to a specific loco as a template stamp that on the particular day and then add individual uh, locomotives to it. And maybe I'll talk about that one when we do a video regarding asset management. I'm going to go back to the base timetable trains tab uh, because that one does definitely relate to timetables, whereas rosters relates to rosters and asset usage relates to assets. Uh, now, if you want to uh, uh, if you want to make best use of, of the group bookings facility and the group bookings facility is the only other place in hops where these individual train timetables end up at the moment. But in the future, obviously, we'll develop and we'll make some lovely timetable management tools. So I'm going to uh, add a base train into this base timetable. So I'll click add train and. Uh, you don't have to put a head code in. If you want to use four character head codes, you can, or Great Western head codes, or whatever you want to use to identify the train. You could just call it train number 12 if you wanted, uh, but I'm going to call it one Foxtrot 45. And I'll make it the 12 o'clock, and I'll make it go from these two imaginary places, Eastgate to Northbury. You can specify different uh, timing schedules for the train. I've only got one here called Steam, but I know a lot of organizations run to uh, a slower timetable on evening dining trains and things like that. And I'll select the class of train. And again, you can have whatever classes of train that you want. These are ones that I've just put in for practice. If you prefer to have Great Western style classes of A, B, C, D, you can put those in or uh, BR type classes of uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, you can put those in as well. Lots of other little options here to do with making symbols appear on the timetables and what days it runs and things like that. So I'll press save. 
And here is the, uh, the summary of this train that I've just entered. It's one Foxtrot 45, ordinary passenger train, 12 o'clock Eastgate to Northbury. I didn't bother to put in any of this stuff to do with reservations and first class and whatnot. And actually, because I've developed this a little bit further as I've been, uh, been demonstrating, it has actually put a little running schedule in just between those two stations using the number of minutes that it knows a train takes to get from one of them to the other. Uh, if I go back to the overview, it will show it to me in sort of timetable format. Obviously, there are only two locations, but if there were loads of locations, the list would be really high. Now, you don't have to go putting all these times in. Again, we're only going one level deeper here. We're going to just saying there is a train and it's called this one Foxtrot 45 and it is the 12 o'clock departure. You don't have to go as far as putting in um, all the times uh, that it calls at every station. I'll go back to my operations menu on the left hand side here and I'll go to daily timetables. And here in the daily timetables list, there's all the days of the year. And I'll scroll down to, uh, to a red one that I haven't uh, demonstrated with already. Uh, here's the 5th of April. It's a red timetable. It knows that there's three trains in the base timetable, but none in the daily timetable. So we're going to take that base timetable roster and we're going to stamp it on the daily timetable. We're going to make a copy of it for every single day that it operates. You can do select all, select none, but I'm just going to do a tick in the 5th of April. I'll go down to the very bottom with selected insert trains from base timetable. Go. And I'll tell you what, let's just look at April. There we go. That'll be easier. And it's now stamped in these three trains uh, from the base timetable uh, into that daily timetable. And if I were to click on the 5th of uh, April, there's the general daily page that um, that we're used to looking at. We've looked at several times and I don't know if you spotted there's a trains tab here. And there's those three trains, but that's not the same list that's in the base timetable. It's a copy of the list that's in the base timetable. So if I make an edit to this train, and instead of calling it one alpha two three, I call it one alpha two nine. It's only been effective on the fifth of April, not uh, ruining uh, the template. Uh, and in fact, just to prove that I haven't ruined the template, uh, I'll have a quick look at it. So the fifth of April, red timetable, base timetable trains. Uh, there it is still as one alpha two three. So it's taken a copy of those trains and it's stamped them on the day. I'll go back to the base timetables, uh, sorry, the daily timetables again. Uh, a question has just been asked about where I got those uh, origin and destination names from. I have to put those in for you. The setting up of a timetable in this way uh, or to work in this way takes a little bit of setting up from me. So unfortunately, you can't put them in yourself. Um, you have to uh, get me to do it. Uh, and that's been asked by uh, by a couple of people by the looks of it. Uh, now you'll notice that the 5th of uh, uh, April, it still had three trains in the base timetable. There's now two WTT trains in the daily timetable and one variation. There's one that I've varied from the base timetable. And I can do that as much as I like. Just because that's what the template said doesn't mean that's what I'm stuck with. But when I'm happy with it, which I now am, I'll tick the box again. And I'll go down to the bottom and I'll publish the daily timetable. And once it's published, you can't delete any trains from it. You can cancel them, but you can't delete them because now that it's published, it will appear in the group booking system and allow the uh, administrator of group bookings to add bookings to that particular train. And I'm not going to talk. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate group bookings now. But what I will show you is that uh, here on the page for Sunday, the 5th of April, I can see how many bookings not just for the whole day, but how many have been booked on each train. You see, at the moment it's zero, but that's where it would show. So this 5th of April page, as well as being a very good uh, one shot place um, to see all this sort of information about staff and group bookings and timetables and everything else, it can be narrowed down on the trains tab to individual trains. Now, I've talked a very lot about timetables there, having said that uh, it was basic. <laughs> um, so I'll just recap that in order to use the majority of features in hops, all hops needs to know is a list of timetables, red, yellow, green, blue. That's all it needs to know for the majority, for rosters, for competence, uh, for all those sorts of things that, uh, that it does, all sorts of calendars. All it needs to know is a list of timetables, red, yellow, green, blue. You only need to go to the detail of putting the 10 o'clock train from Buckfastley to Totnes or the 11 o'clock from Kidderminster to Bridge North. If you want to use it in the group booking system, and you only really need to go to the level of putting individual times at, oh, it didn't show up. Uh, 
of individual times at individual stations in if you're really keen and just really like using hops because at the moment that does not go anywhere but in the future it will obviously everything develops uh, slowly as it goes along now remember i said that this um this uh this base timetable uh this template was stamped onto the individual days that's exactly how it works as well uh, with the other base elements of each timetable. So when we come to talk about rostering, this base roster will be stamped onto a roster and then you can tweak it around as much as you like without affecting the template. When we come to talk about asset management, this base asset usage template will be stamped onto every individual day and then you can allocate a locomotive to it or tweak it around excuse me or change the number of miles that it is. But at the moment we've only talked about base timetable trains and again, because I don't want you to go away from here thinking, oh my goodness, that's far too complicated. You only need to do this if you want it to appear in the group booking system and for group bookings to be able to added, be added to each individual um, train. Uh, one final question has just come up. Uh, if you have a two train day and you normally use steam, but on a Monday, for example, you want one steam and one diesel can be done. Uh, yes, absolutely. You could either say that uh, on Monday it's uh, sort of red brackets M for Monday and on every other day it's red and have two completely separate timetables. Um, or you could say it's all red. But in the uh, base roster and in the base asset usage and all the templates, you can specify if a template is only of use if it's an evening dining modifier or a Sunday lunch modifier. Or in the case of that question from Stuart Mulliner, you could just have a modifier to say it's Monday. Oh, or of course, I don't know why I didn't think of this. You can just untick the Monday box on the ones you don't want on Mondays and just tick the Monday box on the uh, ones that are um, only applicable on Monday. So even easy, you don't even need to mess around with modifiers because it's Monday. Uh, all the template stuff has uh, has Monday to Friday run days uh, on it. And it will only be stamped onto the roster or the asset usage or the timetable or whatever it is we're stamping these things onto if it meets the criteria of the, of the operating characteristics of the template. Uh, I'm going to stop now because uh, I said we'd, we'd, we'd talk for, for roughly an hour and, and we have done. Um, Please do uh, watch this back again because definitely some feedback that I got from last week is that uh, Danny talks very, very quickly and goes through things very quickly, but watching it back again and pausing it and trying it on your own version of hops uh, definitely helps. Uh, and uh, uh, that's another reason why I think these, these video broadcasts are, uh, are very useful because you can, you can watch them back afterwards. Uh, we've already planned our next Hops Live broadcast. It is next Tuesday, the 12th of May at 7 p.m., where we're going to talk about competence recording and competence elements, the interlocking between competences, such as you can only be a driver if you've got PTS, or you can only be a signalman if you've got a medical, those sorts of things, and competence elements in Hops. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you very much for all your queries and questions. Uh, I hope this has been useful. Stay safe, and I'll see you next week.